Hello everyone. So for our project today, we'll be modeling a brake pedal and a few other parts that will go along with the foot peg. Let's dive in. First things first, we need to bring up our trusty gizmo. Now from the gizmo's gear, let's select the polycube option. To make things cleaner, let's hit unify followed by delete loops. Next, we're going to unmask and use the gizmo to move it a bit. Let's throw in a couple edge loops. After unmasking again, we're going to resize it on the Y axis. Now add a few more edge loops to quad it up. Snap it to the side view and scale it on the Z axis. Next up, select Inset for the Polygon Action, choose Single Poly for the target, and inset each poly as the modifier. We're going to Alt Tag those top polys. Switch to QMesh Polygroup All followed by Scale Polygroup All. Let's add an edge loop at the back. Press QC50 and set the crease level to 2. It's gizmo time again. Bring it up, select Deformer Soft from the gear. Select the middle points and move them upwards. Hit Accept to lock it in. Now let's Alt Tag the bottom polys and Q Mesh them out. Press QC50 again. Use Transpose Polygroup Island to scale it flush. Rotate it down a bit. Q-mesh the flat island and then the three polys. After unmasking the polys, move them up and scale on the x-axis. Snap to the front view and move it forward. Q-mesh the single poly. After unmasking the top points, move them outwards. Add an edge loop and snap to the front view again. This time, let's clip the top. Unmask it and readjust the position. At this stage, we're going to uncrease the middle edges and slide them back a little to adjust the thickness. After unmasking the edges, add some thickness. Select Insert Multiple Edge Loops. Let's uncrease the new edge loops and add a couple of supporting loops. Grab the gizmo again and let's select the cylinder 3D from the gear. Press QC50 and do a little scaling on the Z axis. Control and move with the gizmo to duplicate. Repeat the Z axis scaling and then press delete loops. Keep holding control while moving the gizmo to duplicate once more and scale it down a notch. 
go ahead and duplicate it a couple more times. For both cylinders, let's inset the flat island. Select QMesh Polygroup All. To group visible, press Ctrl W. Let's mask the cylinders. Use Gizmo and pick Polycube from the gear. Invert the mask, split on mask points, and hit Delete Loops. Brace yourself because in the next few minutes, we're going to do quite a bit of masking points, moving stuff around, and extruding polys. As we do that, I like to talk about some super useful features that ZBrush offers to save time. The first one we'll talk about is the mirror feature and its cousin, Mirror and Weld. So when you're working on a model in ZBrush, one of the cool features you have at your disposal is the mirror function. This basically lets you flip an entire model over an axis. We also have the mirror and weld function, which takes the mirror concept to a whole new level. It creates a mirror copy of your model, just like the mirror function, but then it welds the two halves together along the axis of symmetry. This is perfect for creating perfectly symmetrical objects. The mirror and weld function is super useful in hard surface modeling because it ensures uniformity in your models. So for example, imagine you're working on a robot with a lot of complex parts. You can just model one side then use Mirror and Weld to automatically generate the other side. Not only will it look great, but it also saves you a ton of time and effort. To sum it up, the Mirror and Mirror and Weld functions are amazing tools in your ZBrush toolbox. They can speed up your workflow and make sure your models are perfectly symmetrical. Now it's time to have a little chat about something we discussed in another video, but also I find absolutely indispensable in ZBrush, the IMM, which is short for Insert Multiple Mesh. IMM brushes are a pretty significant part of the ZBrush toolset, especially when you're dealing with hard surface modeling. So here's the thing. IMM brushes allow you to insert complex 3D shapes into your models. Imagine you've got a selection of different screws, uh, bolts, gears, or whatever other mechanical pieces you can think of, all at your disposal and ready to be inserted into your model at a moment's notice. Well, that's what IMM brushes offer. They have a whole bunch of pre-made 3D parts ready for you to use. But the real beauty of IMM brushes is how much time they save you. Let's say you're working on a, um, a robot and you need to make some bolts. Rather than just modeling these from scratch every time, you can just pick up a bolt from your IMM brush and insert it directly onto your model. This not only speeds up the workflow, but also ensures a high level of detail and uniformity in your models. One of my favorite things about IMM brushes is their versatility. You're not just stuck with the pre-made parts that come with ZBrush. You can actually create your own IMM brushes. This means you can model your own unique parts and then save them into an IMM brush for later use. This is especially handy when you're working on a series of models that share common elements. Another neat feature is that you can combine multiple meshes into a single IMM brush. This is great for creating a library of parts that are specific to a particular project or theme. So as you can see, IMM brushes are a super powerful tool for hard surface modeling in ZBrush. They speed up your workflow, ensure uniformity, and open up a world of creative possibilities. All right, let's get back to the step-by-step -step part of the tutorial. Start off by insetting a poly loop. Be sure to set the modifier to legacy. Next up, delete that bottom edge loop. Now while keeping the shift key pressed, perform a QMesh polygroup all. This switches it to a move operation. Next, transpose those three edges to add some thickness to the bevel. Here's where you'll need the move infinite depth brush. Group the visible parts by hitting Ctrl W and then press QC50.
Now it's time to crease the outer targets of the poly loop. Let's keep setting up those creases with the Z Moller brush. See those edges that might intersect with the cylinder subtool? Let's collapse those. For the edge action, select slide and pick edge for the target. Add a couple of edge loops in the middle, followed by some support loops. Unmask those edges and lower the tad. Throw in a few more support loops for good measure. Let's add in some more edge loops to help quad it up. Set the crease level to 3 and keep adding edge loops to enhance the creasing. Let's slide a few of those edges to give it some breathing room and add an edge loop at the back. Now switch to the cylinder subtool. Unmask the poly using the mask lasso brush and extrude them with the gizmo. Continue this masking and extruding operation with the other two cylinders. Hit accept and delete the lower subdivisions. Let's repeat this step for the other subtool. Merge the subtool down and set the poly count to a nice round 1 million for the Dynamesh utility. Let's wrap it up with a little polish. Let's mask the model, then pull up your gizmo and select the polycube from the gear. Invert that mask and split the unmasked points. Let's mask those bottom polys and move them up. Then hit delete loops. Pick Insert Single Edge Loop and Q-Mesh the poly right through. It's time to add a couple of edge loops. I'll click the two faces and Q-Mesh them up while holding Shift. Alt tag the three polys and adjust the thickness. Group what's visible by hitting Ctrl W. Press apply and delete those lower subdivisions. Let's merge the subtool down and dynamesh it. We can tone down the intensity of the smooth brush to get rid of that little bump. Then go ahead and run a polish to make everything clean.
Now back to the gizmo, this time select Cylinder 3D from the gear. Press QC50. Then scale it in the Z axis. Press apply and dynamesh it at the poly count of 1 million. Then we can run another polish. Snap it to the top view and turn on symmetry in the Z axis with a radial count of 12. Use the mask curve brush to define your shape. Unmask the bottom, invert the mask, and use the clip curve brush to flatten the polys. Let's go ahead and clear the mask and dynamesh it. Now we can run another polish. Let's go ahead and finish it up with some light smoothing. Once again, let's mask the model, pull up the gizmo and select Cylinder 3D from the gear. Invert the mask and split unmasked points. Then we can throw in a couple edge loops at the top. Next, choose QMesh Poly Loop and hold Shift to switch it to a move operation. Unmask those bottom faces and extrude them downwards using the gizmo. Scale them in and add in a few edge loops. Select the polys to poly group. Now let's go for QMesh Poly Group All. Let's inset the flat island, then Q-mesh the polygroup island. While holding shift, adjust the size with Q-mesh polygroup island. Press QC50 and finish setting up the creases with the Z-Modeler brush. Let's set the crease level to 2, then we can select insert multiple edge loops to quad it up. Add an edge loop at the bottom to fix the crease. Let's hit Ctrl W to group visible. Okay, now we can take a breather and check out what we have so far. We did skip over the basic cylinders and the hoses, but don't worry, we'll circle back to those hoses in another video. You'll notice the foot peg is the same on the other side, so we just mirrored it over. That's pretty much it for this side. Here's another look at this piece, just in case you want to pause it to model. Next on the agenda, we'll tackle the handlebars and the dash in the next video.